so when and I've been working uh, on like not just for the telco space, but some of the edge compute capabilities for customers in the context of OpenShift. And I think uh, this video that I'm going to share is really around the uh, edge compute. And just to show them that if they went down the Kubernetes path and OpenShift, for example, they could still also be able to deploy VNF, so virtual network functions as part of the, the environment and drive all of that through ACM. ACM, we think, will have a, an important role to play for the, the placement of workloads across uh, an edge environment when you're talking like uh, hundreds or thousands potentially of endpoints in there. Uh, when anything special you wanted to add from your, your experience with dealing with our favorite uh, telcos in Australia and New Zealand? Yeah, I think the, um, you know, it's an interesting space. I know that um, as of 4.8, um, the single node cluster options now available to test on the assisted installer. I don't know if any, everybody saw that announcement um, today. I've been trying to get that up and running. So I, can, I think that kind of adds um, to the whole kind of like edge use case capability. And of course, you know, that that's exciting from the 4.8 side of things. And yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very keen to sort of explore that a bit more on how that works. All right, cool. So if that's OK, I'm just going to go and share my screen and take you through the, the demos that we did. Uh, can you guys see my screen properly? Yep. Yeah. OK. Yep. So, oh, good. so it's about 10 minutes and sorry, it's a bit long because uh, anyway, um, it's not a live demo. So the idea is we have effectively a um, 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 a hub cluster where ACM will be sitting and we have a set of uh, targeted edge uh, clusters in that case just one because I'm running that in the cloud and I'm paying for it and you know we sort of so anyway so so it's, it's one one managed cluster if you want from an ACM perspective what this demo does is it shows that you can deploy using OpenShift virtualization so uh, an install where you can deploy VMs you can deploy a uh, virtual machine, so a Fedora virtual machine, and then attach to this VM a couple of VNF. One is an F5 LTM for load balancing capabilities, and the other one is a 14.8 uh, SD1 uh, VNF. And what we do as part of the demo, we deploy uh, those three elements, and we able to attach to those three elements some sort of day zero config for your standard uh, HC model, or is it the manual model, where you can have then after that your EMS, your element management system, to go and start monitoring and um, configuring for the two configuration of all those environments. So uh, you'll see that those components all get deployed with multiple network interfaces using Multus, and all of that is driven from uh, from ACM. The way we do it with ACM is GitOp. So we have a set of uh, repos, Git repos, under which we have a set of Kubernetes uh, resources that are defining the various components of this effectively application, which is a service chain application, which is made of uh, VMs, YAML file, um, services, routes, and you'll see as part of the demo. So as part of the demo, you see the deployment of the application, I mean, the three components, and then you see that uh, what is deployed within the environment matches what is being seen by the element management system. And then what we show is an example of a GitOps approach where for the F5 environment, we provide a route. There's an issue with the route. We need to change the certificate and we can dynamically within the Git repo change the certificate and be able to connect to the route. So hopefully, I mean, that gives a bit of context. Any any specific question on that? Or... All right, if not, then I'll just start the video. So you have 10 minutes of, uh, hopefully you won't fall asleep. I'll try and make it entertaining if I can. So this is just the same screen for 10 seconds. And now we start after that to see. So you have on the left hand side, you have the edge cluster onto which I'm, uh, I'm going to deploy those uh, VMs and VNF. And on the right hand side, you have the old GUI version of ACM, which is a 2.1, 2.0 something. <laughs> anyway, not the 2.2 that we have now. Um, and this is the cluster, the view of this cluster being managed by ACM called OCP Bear 2. It's running a 4.513 at the time of OpenShift. And then what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is deploy those VNF onto the environment. And then after that, we're going to go and check that the VNF have been configured properly, that they match what you see in the EMS and so forth. So I'm just checking the various labels because I'm using one of the labels to deploy towards this uh, specific target. There's currently no application running. It's a, it's a cluster that has only up. And now you see one application being run. And as you can see on the left hand side, you see a set of VMs that have been, um, so this one ignores this one that was already there by default. And then you have like a, a 40 gigabyte being deployed, a Fedora and your F5 LTM. And now it takes a bit of time for them to 
uh, spin up and there's ways you can um, make it quicker but because I'm using a single server in a cloud that's quite cheap and it's nested it's like not super uh, quick right so but normally you would do that on proper bare metal installs this is like a nested hypervisor install which is not even officially supported but it works um, so what you can see, you can see the various containers being uh, created for the deployment of those uh, VMs and VNF. And then we can see on the SEMB, there's an application called Service Chain Application that's being deployed. And we're going to click on it and start to see the various resources for this Service Chain Application. On the right hand side, this is the ACM view again. So you can see those pods getting up and running. There's a few couple of pods that need to be uh, done before you actually have the VMs up and running. But you can see on the right hand side the application. It's it's using a set of pods, and you can see for this application, this is the resources that you can see. You have effectively three virtual machines, one of them being your F5 environment, the second one being the 48, the third one being the Fedora, and associated with those associated with those um, uh, VMs, you have a set of routes and services we use those routes of services to access the to, to, to emulate if you want an out of band network to access those various um, vms so you, and what we're going to do now is start to check what's acmc's versus what's being deployed onto this environment and check that everything maps properly basically So you can see, for example, the, the Fedora is up and running, the 40 gate will be up and running. The F5 LTM was a lot bigger in terms of sizing and the massive like quick out to file on the back. Or anyway, so it takes a bit of time. You could accelerate all those things, right? So what I'm checking is on the Fedora, you can see Fedora has got like a set of network interfaces already defined, right? So you have the standard port networking and two extra interfaces defined by Multus. So we can support typically as you would have on any type of uh, VM setup in your environment, you have multiple network interfaces into this environment. And then we can show that those various networks are connected. So one of these interfaces will be connected back to the LTM and then the LTM will have another interface connected back to the 40 gate, as you would for any type of uh, deployment on any type of uh, like, uh, whatever hypervisor you want to use. Uh, I think for the next one, I'm checking the network interfaces. So you can see that the network interfaces on the 40 gate started. So we've deployed the D0 config. There's two network interfaces we've created as opposed to single one. So you can already have some sort of access by the EMS environment to this uh, cluster. And we're going to check if I look at the route. So you can see on the right hand side, there's a route for the 40 gate. This is the URL that gives me uh, out of bound access to the console for this um, this VNF basically, and you can see that some of the configuration on the VNF is already applied properly. So I'm going to browse to the route. I just need to log in the first time. There's a first time login. You need to change the password. But so this is the 40 gate UI. So typically your EMS would go and manage the 40 gate through something similar. Um, I'm just changing the password right now. That's the first step, first time login. You have to do that effectively. And then we're going to see the information sitting on the, uh, the EMS, if you want, versus what's being configured into the uh, Kubernetes environment. And that this match is typically I go and check within the pod that's representing the, the VNF, the network interfaces and the associated IP uh, subnets for it. Yeah, it just takes a bit of time. So now I'm going to be able to access the, so that that's the view of the VNF. So as you can see, I've been able to reach out the VNF uh, from the out of band network. And if I check the network components, I go to the network tab, I check the network interfaces. And this VNF has been configured with two interfaces, right? I can see the information about the physical interfaces, the type of access for it and the IP addresses. So if I click on the right VM and if I look actually not the VM, but on the so I can see on the VM itself, there's two network interfaces, but then I need to go and check into the pod and the pod has the information about the actual uh, uh, detailed information for those interfaces. And if you look at the YAML view, you, you can find that those two 
the IP addresses as part of the pod match exactly the IP addresses defined in there, right? That's, that's what we're trying to show in this one. The next uh, part of the presentation then shows you a bit of uh, um, a GitOps approach, which means so now we're going to configure a route to access by out of band the F5 LTM, and I'm going to deploy within the Git repo that I'm using for the application the the F5 uh, route uh, resource, if you want, right? So I'm just deploying it right now, and as you can see, I'm deploying it, but it's the wrong configuration. I've put it as a pass through when you should actually uh, a TLS termination in there. And I'll try and reach the URL, you'll see. So I've, de I've deployed it, so it's committed into my Git repo. We're going to see it being deployed as part of ACM, so ACM will pick up, uh, the managed cluster will pick up that this uh, file has appeared and it will, it will deploy it onto the cluster. It takes a bit of time, so you will see on the right hand side. So currently there's no route for the F5 environment. These are the routes for the um, namespace that I'm using. You can see there's no route for F5. And we will see, as you can see, ACM hasn't picked up the, the change of the file on the, the git commit, if you want, on the right hand side. And it will, once it finds it, it will deploy it to the cluster. So it, now it's picked up the something, but it's not validated. Now we're going to see this route appearing on the cluster. So ACM has picked up that there's a, a new resource in the git repo. And now we need to deploy this resource onto the targeted cluster. You, you need to have a little tick, the little green tick to say that the route has been, has been successfully deployed. So we're waiting, takes a bit of time for the route to be deployed to the cluster. And once the route is deployed, here you go, the route just deployed to the cluster, that's this one here at the top. I'm going to be able to actually go to this URL and see what happens. So I'm trying to access, same, same thing as what I did with the 40 gate, I'm trying to access the F5 LTM. And I'm trying to reach this, uh, this URL and you can see there's uh, an issue with it. I cannot, there's a, an invalid certificate for it, so I need to change the way I've set up my routes. So that's the whole idea about the uh, GitOps is, ah, oh, I've done the configuration, I was wrong, I can go back to my Git repo, change what I need to do, commit it, and it will get deployed automatically. So you'll see what I'll do, I'll delete the previous resources that I created, and I will upload a different resource, you will see the route being withdrawn from the cluster. So here you go, the route has disappeared from the left hand side, it's been removed from the OpenShift environment. I'm uploading the proper file with the proper uh, route definition, so which is like TLS termination and re-encryption. And I will, and you will see that you can then browse to the uh, the F5 environment and configure the F5 environment the same way that we did for the 40 gates. So that takes a bit of time. Uh, that's it. It's this one. It will reappear and then I should be able to go and browse through to the environment after that. So it hasn't appeared yet. Again, ACM needs to pick it up. Once it's picked it up, then it can be deployed onto the relevant uh, managed cluster. Maybe advance a little bit. Here you go. There's a route being deployed. I mean, picked up. It will get deployed and I should be able to browse through it once it gets deployed. Sorry, maybe it's a bit too technical or I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense. You have this route now. Can I access the route? I should be able to access the route this time. I've put the proper configuration. And here I'm redirected directly to the uh, web browser. And then I can do the same current password, blah, blah, blah. Sorry. And uh, the whole setup and access the environment. 